And good evening, everyone. And thank you to be here and to be watching this new Masterclass session. We are joined today by the people from the amazing Spatial team. Welcome, Tyrone and Jake, uh, to yeah. a new Sandstorm meetup. How's it going? That's awesome. Great to be here. Great to be here. This is awesome. Yeah, thanks for having us, Oscom. Appreciate awesome. it. And I've been reading in the chat, there's one of our community, Maxi, who was in the middle of killing a, uh, a bread boss in Dead Island 2, but he's paused especially to be here. And that's awesome <laughs> that's to hear. <laughs> why we rank above killing zombies on Friday. That's great. Exactly. Right. right. There, there are some priorities in life, you know? <laughs> it's just really? how it goes. The um, things you can pause. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So for anyone who doesn't know, in those Metaverse sessions, we go over the newly signed partnerships with our Metaverse partners. And Spatial is one of them. They want to use the Sandstorm services to you know, help with creating assets for their world. And today we'll learn more about their project, more about what they are about, what they want to do, and how you can get started and build assets in Spatial. Let's get started by introducing all of the guests. Tyron and Jake, if you want to go each to your respective roles in the company and uh, how long you've been working in this industry and, you know, why you're excited to, to work still at Spatial. Tyron, go ahead. Sure. So my name is Tyron Webb. I'm the community evangelist and artist and project liaison for Spatial. Uh, I started as an artist using Spatial almost two years ago and it changed everything for me. Right, I now had the ability to have infinite wall space. So I just started putting my artwork up into the spaces. And from there, it just was about letting people know that they could come in and have a conversation with me the same way they would as if I were standing next to the painting in a gallery. And because of that, I became the first person to sell an NFT out of Spatial. So from that That's point, awesome. it changed everything for me, right? Now I could reach out to people and say, hey, come look at my, hear the story behind my art, right? And that was exciting. And now I owned a global art gallery. So Jake was one of the first people I met with in Spatial, same with Bree and a couple others. They came into my environment when I had a gallery show. And from that point, you know, they reached out and said, hey, would you like to help others do the same thing you did with Spatial? And I've been a part of the team since October of 21. So it, it's it's amazing. It's best job I ever had, right? It's really cool to just be a part of something where you get to help others um, do what they love for a living. You know, just a little bit easier because it's another platform uh, to create and build on. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Super Tyrone. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Ty Tyrone's been like one of the, the OGs on the platform, like really like push like pushing us as a platform and then like introducing us to this whole new community um, of like artists and creators and things like that. It was really, like you said, like one of the first people who became successful using these virtual spaces to kind of find a new medium for his art, which is one of the pieces is behind him. Is his back. Yeah, right, right. So, uh, oh, that's your art? That's awesome. That's, yeah, yeah. Made with Kansas nice. spray paint. I don't use brushes. That one, oh, that cool. one took like 70 hours to make, but thanks. Right. Jake. Damn. Yeah. So I was able to take those physical pieces and make them, you know, bring them virtual and create spaces around them. Um, so yeah, just, uh, hi everybody, Jake Steinerman. I'm Spatial's head of community, also leading our developer relations. Um, so I've been with Spatial, uh, been over two years, uh, but I've been working in augmented and virtual reality for about 10 years, um, across all different, uh, Damn. companies and mediums and things like that. So we're very early actually in, in enterprise. So like companies using augmented and virtual reality, uh, which is what Spatial used to do. Um, we, we were one of the launch apps on the Microsoft HoloLens 2 back in 2018, and we've been on the MetaQuest and VR since early 2020. Um, so kind of been going on that journey as a platform. So the tech as Spatial has actually been like really trusted and robust because it's been around for a long time. And we've just gotten to a place now where most of what Spatial is being used for is things like you're seeing in the video here, like social events and games, like immersive experiences, brands creating immersive experiences, um, all kinds of creative activations. Um, so it's been a really wild ride for, for Spatial and our community who's been growing with us as well. So really excited to be now partnered with Sandstorm and to get connected with the entire Sandstorm community. That's uh, that's awesome. I think it's, it's really interesting also to see how a company evolves. Would you mind going more into detail as to how it was to go from maybe this first, this tech company and then being more community driven? And I'm sure meeting Tyrone also helped in that aspect, you know, just meeting okay. creators and, and, and 
battling the absurdity and creativity of those people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty wild. So, like I said, we started um, like the the core of the company, and like the initial like hypothesis was, you know, people want to feel like they're in the same physical space as one another, right? And this is before COVID. This is back in 2017, 2018. Um, and taking these headsets that were coming out, Microsoft HoloLens, Magic Leap, et cetera, and using it for that purpose. So you had companies like Ford and, and Mattel using Spatial to bring their engineers and their designers into the same space. You would use those headsets where you would see your real world around you, but you would see a hologram of essentially like your coworkers there. And they'd be able to bring in the models of their vehicles or their toys, and then their their different teams together into one place to ideate and and collaborate together um and then over time what was actually funny was you know especially when covid started that type of uh you know mechanism became much more interesting to to companies but it was still really hard to get people into headsets because you had to be physically with someone and put a headset on them to show them what was possible it's still um, hard It's yeah, it's still it's still hard to this day. Yeah, I mean, I have I mean, arguably, I have a headset right next to me. I you know don't use it as much, but we'll get into that. Um, just it's an accessibility thing. So yeah, you know, we went on this journey of introducing spatial to other platforms like iOS and Android, uh, and then the ultimate platform, a web browser, where you just click a link and you're in. And when we did that, we also made spatial completely free. This is you know, three years ago, two three years ago, uh, and around that time, this is now. Uh, in the timeline, like early 2021, uh, that's when Beeple sold, you know, his piece for for 69 million, and NFTs became, you know, mainstream. Yeah. And artists were looking for ways to, you know, not only give their art utility, but as a way to showcase it to their communities. So they discovered Spatial as saying, "Hey, I can just drag and drop right in a web browser, instantly lay out this gallery, and have, you know, fill my gallery with people, and actually start to meet people." Um, and create more of a social aspect around it, make it interactive, make it more interesting. Uh, and that's where artists like Tyrone came in and discovered the platform. And as he says, he has you know created a global art gallery because he can you know send a link to people, post on his Twitter, and people can come in. You can come in in VR if you want that you know really immersive experience, which a lot of people do, or you can come in, in you know on your phone or um, uh, or on web, and, you know, it's for a really accessible experience. So that was happening for you know a good year, um, and then to fast forward, you know events were happening, art galleries were happening, but we're, you know creators and the community were really looking for more things to do once they were in these spaces. And looking at art and socializing is great, but you know you really want that next level of all right, I'm in this space, I want to go do things. You know whether that's playing games or just having some level of interactivity. So in yeah. December, uh, just a few months ago, we launched our creator toolkit which is our Unity SDK. So now you can build in Unity a tool that you know millions already know how to use. Um, it's what 50% of video games are built with today. So you can build directly in that and then publish with one click to Spatial. So what that gets you is building basically a full on video game with Unity URP support and everything out of the box Unity, including visual scripting. And then that experience is instantly running in a web browser, in VR, on iOS and on Android. So from a game developer perspective, yeah, it's insane. It's so much easier just to get your games and experiences out there, and all the other like infrastructure stuff typically associated with a game, right? Like the piping, the multiplayer, voice, video, text, chat, it's discoverability. Yeah. That's, that's all your infrastructure. Embedded. It's mm -hmm. all just embedded in spatial. So when you have published, you're getting all of that mm -hmm. um, right in, including a huge community of creators and. and And explore. Well. This is this is really the power of Unity because Unity has such a massive library of uh, of code and people and you know experiences that people use and even just a big community of developers that then you know can easily try out different platforms and see which one fits best for the needs. So that's so interesting. Maybe to go back on you mentioned NFTs and uh, and you mentioned how you got into NFTs. Maybe Tyrone, let's look at the other aspect. You were a creator. You had to do the step of going from you know. Uh, real life to digital how was right. this step for you well it was driven so like jake had mentioned you know when that sale was made by people everybody rushed into the space and a lot of artists started speaking amongst themselves of like what is this we were already familiar with the concept of presenting digital images for prints right artists would paint something and then make a print and sell it so we we were recognizing that it was just another way to get our artwork out there But as you research more and find out, like the idea of the royalties is what changed everything. As soon as you had that conversation yeah. with any 
artists and said, listen, you can continue to earn on what you create. That was really the, the, I guess the icing on the cake, right? Mm -hmm. That was what got people into it. So for me, it was more about provenance, right? Right. Correct. Like Mm -hmm. the idea that you're going to have something that's out there, you know, forever. Right. And if, if you think about what kind of utility can be made available doing this, now artists could do things like create and manage a collection because they can add their own form of utility to the pro- to the project, right? Start thinking about their art as something they could do this. And that's where Spatial came in for me because the idea is that's an additional utility you can add to any project, whether you're a creator or an artist or anything. So having a space where you can bring your community in within NFTs, that was great because we already saw these collection of communities that were around a particular project, whether it be a PFP project or anything else, but you now had this and you could bring them in, in one shot, right? You go in, talk to the community manager, say, Hey, create a space in spatial, invite everybody in on a Friday night and hang out and do the same things you're doing. And it becomes like a 3d discord. So Mm. NFTs just represented a way to, to get communities together quickly and start to do things with each other because they were already doing that now when you add gamifying and questing and badges and all these things now you're just building further utility into those projects as they exist now they can start thinking about how does the 3d pfp become something so it's evolving quickly so when you talk about nfts i just immediately think about all the utility that you can offer to those projects and, and create of course, it's it's really interesting to think of it uh, more so you do your digital art and then you have this entire thing that unfolds where you, you can right. do all those different elements that you wouldn't be able to do without it. And I think that's that's really powerful. Now, to go back to, to Spatial in general, we mentioned, you know, you talked about the story and where you evolved. And now you mentioned there is a big transition with the new creator toolkit. So now what is Spatial's goal? Where, where do you want to go? What is the what are the next steps for you? Yeah, I mean, for us, I mean, it's 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 always been the same throughout. I think it's just the tools that have changed, and that's just giving creators and artists a platform for telling their stories, for sharing their work in all different kinds of ways. Um, so the creator toolkit is really kind of the, just the next step in that journey, because um, though we're using Unity, which is you know tends to be a more developer focused platform, our community is I'd say majority like artists and creators, and maybe even like not developers, you know, or people who don't consider themselves developers. But with the creator tool bit, they're able to essentially like upskill themselves and learn Unity um, and build with Unity and then publish these spaces um, everywhere. So everything, everything we've done, everything we're doing and stuff that we can get into a little bit later that's coming um, as well as all just to to benefit you know, artists and creators and allow them, you know, because what, what's essentially happening now is, you know, we're spatial we like to consider it almost like the youtube for 3d spaces Mm -hmm. it's really this next generate just next generation of creators and and influencers you know whereas you know web 2 was you know you know youtube and and twitter and facebook and those kinds of things and people you know have gotten really uh skilled at you know using adobe tools and things like that 2d content now we're getting into this phase where creators and influencers are becoming increasingly skilled and will be have to be increasingly skilled in tool like Adobe tools for for three D um, and Unity and Unreal Engine and things like that for creating three D experiences. And you're even starting to see that today too. If we want to talk about the hot topic of AI, um, there's obviously a lot going on there. Like every day, there's like another year in advance of AI. Stuff. Yeah, really. Yeah, you know, like just what's like going, a- yeah, just what's going on with you know creating AI content for for two D, you know, images and, and even videos are starting to get into. You're starting to see some early um, glimpses and early steps, yeah. AI for for three D as well. How you, how can you just through just talking create a whole three D world? And that's something that's really interesting to us. And it's really interesting to a lot of you know platforms in in our industry as well. And ha- and it's all just about making it easier for creators to build and tell their stories. For yeah. sure. Yeah, I think this is like kind of the only downside about three D is uh, th- there's such a big learning curve. I think uh, it's really difficult for people to start because especially 3D, 3D um, um, softwares are getting more and more complex as the time goes. I mean, just look at Blender and how it evolved over the last 10 years. It's 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 crazy. And so somebody who's new and who wants to learn Blender tomorrow, they're scared <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the progress. They don't know where to start. And and uh, I think it's it's discouraging for a lot of people. So I think AI can help to get the, the ball rolling, to get a finished product to 
see your first results and then obviously you would need to refine uh what you do with your with your own skill sets um similar to how coders use ai nowadays with with um with, with their code base. Now, let's go back to what you mentioned before. You mentioned we are a community of devs and creators. How do you make both people talk to that together? <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, Tyron, do you want to take that as a, as a creator? So? Yeah, well, I mean, the, all right. So the biggest thing I'm noticing right now, when you talk about building these, these metaverse spaces, these immersive 3D experiences, there is a point where the artist is just as important, right? And there's this meshing of technical skills and artistic skills. And we see them in the projects in general out there because you need to have somebody who can code this and somebody who can create that, but then we need the art, right? And then we need to have the environment or it's built on an idea. The collaborative aspect of it all is what lends itself to bridging that gap. I don't even think it's a, it's something even to worry about. It's like a foregone conclusion that if you're going to move forward with any kind of projects out here, you're going to need artistic viewpoints, right? From the creators and then the technical side of things. And when you start doing this, you kind of unleash that, that uh, creator side of the technical folks and vice versa, because you have to gain these experiences in order to create in the space. And I think that's where spatial has really made it possible for any skill level to come in and find a way to contribute to the conversation on how to create something or make it themselves. Right. And then that's the point where you feel as though you're bridging the gap you're talking about. I think, I think also it's, it, our community is like really unique in the sense that it's so like, um, the, the types of people we have in our community, like is so diverse. Like if you go into our discord, we have roles in different channels for everyone from like 3d builders to musicians and educators and like traditional architects. And they're all kind of coming together in this space and, and they're looking for each other. You know, people, these, um, you have musicians looking for 3d builders and artists and stuff like that. And they're coming together. A great example is, is our friend and, and the musician dope Stilo, uh, LA based, uh, musician and producer. Uh, he's he knows how to put on a show he knows how to create great music uh, but he's not you know a 3d builder which he shouldn't have to be you know, he focuses on the music um but what he's done what he's done over the last year and a half or, or more uh, on spatial is he's not only built up his whole community around uh, around uh, his music but he's collaborated with 3d builders like cyber nerd baby uh, and and cyber nerd baby is a great team um, has built, you know, whole worlds, you know, for him and with him. So now, you know, Stilo isn't just performing on like a standard stage. He's got basically Stilo world. If you go to Stilo.world, um, you can check it out and he does performances every week. And it's this epic stage. You actually saw a glimpse of it in one of the earlier videos uh, with the hover car, with the giant kind of robot lady. In the ah, back right okay. That's, that's, <laughs> there it is, right there. this one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Stilo World. So now you can ride a hover car that's so during, cool. like, all, over the stage during a performance. And now they just added vehicles so you can drive like these like nice. otherworldly golf carts around um, the yep. space too. So they have, they do performances all the time. They're even, you know, his community is even filming uh, videos in the space too. They're doing like this almost like a little sitcom thing that they release um, every few weeks. So it's becoming, it's, it's go, it starts with the music and that art, but it goes quickly beyond that where it's this whole immersive experience. And he, you know, he is, and, and his community have built out this brand um, as, as the steel of brand and beyond where he's collaborating with 3d artists, but other, also other musicians um, and hosting these concerts. So I think that's like, it's always a great example to show that because yeah. showing how you can be you know a musician, which is, you know, not 2d or 3d artists. It's, you know, you know musical art, but still, take advantage of this next generation of, of technology, the next generation of the internet and how it really enhances the experience. Because even though he's, you know, he doesn't have you know, millions of followers yet today, he's still able to have his own venue, his own yeah, and it's an awesome experience. Madison Square Garden, basically. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, he's, he's definitely evolved the fan club, right? The idea that it's not just a fan club. Now you're part of a community that has people that are being put up there to do their performances opportunities for other artists mm, to do spoken nice. word to sing to do whatever they want and it becomes kind of like that cavalcade Positive of sharing talent, yeah. you know one percent that's so cool i think um i really like this approach and i think we we 
it's really important to give those creative tool sets to creators just to be even more creative. I think uh, people just underestimate all the things you can do and just think about this, you know, where would you be able to see such a venue where music is performed? And instead of just chilling on your YouTube link where you're listening to a music, you can just go into this 3D space and see everything happening around you and i don't know do do something at the same you're, time Still you're an friend. active participant awesome. in it you're not yeah. you're not just sitting like obviously you can exactly. sit and just watch but you can also now be an active participant and like co-collaborator with like uh, yeah with artists and stuff too which is crazy i was i was thinking there are like so many co-streaming services you know where you know you're just you're just linking music to your friends and it's just syncing the music and here it's basically the same but with better visuals you can chat with them and even you know it's yeah. it's it's really cool so i, I i'm, I'm another, a big fan of this idea there's another level to it and just something i always throw out there because i played around with the idea in my own studio right is putting a tv on the wall and mm -hmm. then logging into spatial on it and then having whatever world i'm in so imagine having a large enough screen somewhere in your house that's logged into spatial it's like a window into another world you can participate contribute and talk to the people that you see there and it can be two ways if you wanted to so that's kind of so how we're cool. introducing people to it as well nice i think this this tends really this um ties really well into the next question i wanted to ask which is more so related on the question of the creator economy and you talked about this before with nfts but i think there are also other ideas that are really interested interesting that are being discussed and and thought about now which is player retention new player acquisition and things like this so how would you i know it's a complex topic but <laughs> what are your thoughts on on all those things and and where do you stand today yeah yeah i mean for us that's definitely like very top of mind for us like right now as we speak um is is yes yeah, creator attention monetization all of those things i mean it's why you know for one we put out the creator toolkit because we have you know spatial's been around for a few years and you've always been able to build in spatial um and but it was you know fairly limited you can you know bring in your own environments and worlds that were built with blender um, and you can bring in your own art, 2D and 3D art, and lay it out in a space through drag and drop. But there was really that next level of interactivity that creators were really asking for. All right, I can have this space and squat can go in there, but it's fairly static in what I can do. I want to make it you know, interactive. Uh, and Spatial is built on Unity at an underlying layer. So adding the toolkit was you know, something we've always wanted to do. And, and really allowed uh, you know creators to do that. We also didn't want to. You can see through these videos here that this one from from Metaverse Fashion Week uh, and the other ones you've seen. Um, we don't want to limit creators to a certain like artistic style or something like that as well. We really want to you know allow you to bring in your own style and vibe to to spatial. So if you go to spatial.io now to the homepage and you go through um, the, the, all the different categories, what's trending, what's popular. Um, you'll see like every space is very different stylistically and artistically from one another because we want to allow creators and communities projects to bring in your own assets uh, right into spatial you know either you know traditional standard assets nfts what have you um, you know through unity or through spatial directly and then also we've been releasing a ton of new features to our creator toolkit basically like i said allowing you to to build anything you'd like um, any type of game or interactive experience around there as well. So building a platform and a toolkit that's both, you know, open and flexible, but still gives you, you know, a form of guidance um, in terms of how to build those spaces effectively, because they are running across virtual reality, iOS, Android, and web. Um, so building an experience that performs well across those two takes, you know, a really robust, a robust, a robust, robust platform, you know, that we built over a long time. And then getting into like the, you know, of course, creators can build these spaces and what you can do today, um, say from the Web3 NFT side is token gate these spaces. So if you have uh, a project, right, and your community is already built into that, you can build your world with Unity with the creator toolkit uh, and then token gate that space so that only that, that community comes in there. And you can even use custom avatars. So if your project has a 3D, uh, a 3D avatar um, as well. Um, you can utilize that in that space. So we're going to be introducing soon this concept of ecosystems within Spatial where you can say have, you know, I'm just seeing some of the names on screen here, like the CyberCongs um, ecosystem uh, in Spatial where they have their own set of worlds. It's basically, you can build your own metaverse on top of Spatial where all these worlds nice. can be interconnected to one another via portals. Um, you can even connect to, you know, to other ecosystems within Spatial, say, you know, Artifact or others um, as, you know, they might build out 
um, their worlds, so you can interconnect to them. Or even beyond that, you know, to look at Metaverse Fashion Week, that was actually a collaboration with Decentraland. And we were able to link out to Decentraland nice. and Decentraland was able to link back out you know, to Spatial. So you can nice. go in between those two. And especially since we're using Ready Player Me as our as one of our avatar layers, boom, there it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can have you know interoperable avatars as well that exist you know, across you know, from spatial to decentral and to, to anywhere else that RPM, the thousands of other platforms that Ready Player Me operates on. Um, and it just goes into our ethos of, you know, we know that for this concept of the metaverse, the big M word to exist, you need to work on interrupt. Yeah, for yeah sure. there has to be the interoperability. Um, so that's what we want to give creators and explorers, the whole community, the ultimate flexibility there. Yeah, there's so many ways to work on interoperability. I know there's like a big debate on file types. And so for this, let's not get into this today. I think it would be way too technical and way too complex. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. I think token gating is definitely a, a good way to to monetize your experience. I think um, uh, I'm, I'm sure you can also create NFT simple ways to to raise funds for your projects or something like this. So well, the, the, when, when you bring that up, I mean, realistically, what you're looking at right here is a yes. 3D PFP. Yes, right what's price. spinning around so if you were to generate that for your project even if it was a one-to-one -one match with your 2d pfp right that's something that any collector would be interested in now i can go run around as it and i think that's been something that folks have been saying they want to do for a while and we've been hearing and hearing but it's mm -hmm. it's a lot of work to get it done mm -hmm. but when it's done it is an immediate value add Mm -hmm. to those that are already a part of your project and that's how this is in general what, what jake's saying is is within the creator tool you're free to do what you want come up with the world you want to have and then incorporate whatever ecosystem how you reward your followers your explorers you know participants whatever you want to call them um that's going to be that's going to be the impetus for a lot of change as far as as we're looking at like 3d immersive experiences like i'm going to drop in and hang out yeah, that's that's awesome and i'm sure i mean this is all this entire topic of digital identity and it's so important and uh you can see it in decentraland you can see it in spatial you can see it in all those metaverses that use those aspects and i'm sure with this avatar model um that's your way to basically just get recognized and talk with your friends and maybe make a, a clique that has you know punk make a game hair. Play, right play uh, a game together everybody just comes to you yeah of course start goofing awesome. around Okay, very cool. No, I, I I really like this. Finally, I think in the clip before we saw um, here we're seeing uh, L'Oréal, we we saw Boss before. How do you work with those bigger brands on activations? How does that work? Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we yeah we love you know working with brands. We see that you know across the board. Um, we've worked with a lot of huge brands over the years. Everyone from like you saw uh, Hugo Boss, Tommy Hilfiger um uh, l'oreal mcdonald's the utah jazz i mean the, the list goes on and on and on um and you know these brands are now able to build there is you know immersive experiences kind of next generation storefronts or just kind of those memorable experiences for their communities uh, and their fans um so we love you know working with brands and, and brands are coming to us we have a lot of brands coming to spatial being like you know we want to to build these these 3d experiences oftentimes they don't have that skill set in-house um, so what we do is pair these uh, these brands with uh, partners in, and developers in our community uh, that we know are really skilled in. This is, of course, where you know, Sandstorm com comes in as key as well, is pairing these brands who are now you know, really excited and actually building real experiences. They're not experimenting anymore. These, these are real functional experiences. Uh, and they're looking for those builders uh, to build those experiences on them. And every time we put out you know, one of these um, one of these activations, it just kind of draws, you know, more brands to, to the platform, to the metaverse. And I think showing it in a way that's um, tangible for them, that's understandable for them. Um, I, for Especially when you look at fashion and these other things too, I almost think of it with, you know, what these brands are creating is kind of a virtual storefront. But if you think of it, if you, you know, if you live in a big city and you've, you've been to say like your local, like Nike store, if you've been to like the Nike store in New York or something like that, right? Those aren't only stores, but they're really experiences, right? You're surrounded by the brand and it's kind of this memorable experience. Now these brands mm -hmm. are able to build that and even go, you know, next level with that as well. Like the Hugo Boss space is awesome because um, it's not just, you're not just going around into this really beautiful space and yeah. looking at the next uh, set of fashion for, for mm -hmm. the summer. Exactly. It, it, there's a quest you go on. 
and you have to go and collect all the collectibles, which acts as both a way, you know, a game for the space, but also yeah. as a way to guide you through the space. And then you're rewarded with a virtual Hugo Boss outfit. You can see there briefly uh, in the video that you can put on your Ready Player Me avatar. So it becomes, from a brand's perspective, it becomes a way to interact with their communities better. Um, but the really cool thing is it's 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 very disruptive. Apologies to cut you off. It's it's very disruptive compared to um, how classical stores and how classical venues are done. And I think it's very cool to see that you know they're using those spaces to be more creative and to try out the absurdity uh, that is there. Uh, actually, and I don't necessarily think it's to be creative. I think it's an extension of their creativity. Like yes, when you look of course, at the spaces that are coming, like the environments that are being built by these brands. It is. It is that next level stuff. Like someone's been set loose within their creative departments, right? They get to come in and just envision what they want. And that's nice because you get to see another way the company thinks, the brand thinks, what, what they think of themselves, what do they want to offer to us. And it's it's been a pleasure to, to watch all of these folks come in and build stuff. And you know it's creative down to its core. Yeah, that's awesome. And. I really want to see more creativity in the world. I think that's that's what cures uh, the the craziness and the madness that we live in. And I'm sure um, uh, I'm sure a lot of people would relate here in the chat. And I see a lot of people in the chat. Uh, hello, Life Rocker, who's who loves the versatility of, of spatial, and I'm sure we all love it too. Um, hello, Cynthia. Hello, Risk. Hello, Bria. Hello, uh, Mosquito. Yo. Hello to all these people. Sparky Snickle, Shiny DCL risk and all those others uh, welcome to the show i hope you like it and if you have any questions feel free to prepare them we'll answer everything at the end now let's go over to the second part which is what all those creators will be interested in which is how do we actually get started in spatial how do we build things and i think you mentioned it's really easy it's as easy as dragging and dropping would you mind going more into the depth into this yeah definitely i can start sharing my screen here and we can uh we can jump in. Sure. Uh, let me do that right now. I'm going to present. Uh, I'm going to start with my whole screen just so you can kind of see everything. There isn't any uh, sound for now to, to worry about. Um, so I'm going to click share there. Cool. cool. Awesome. All right. So I got an ultra wide screen. So, so. <laughs> so maybe let's start with the very basics. You mentioned yes. before it's built on Unity. So for anyone who doesn't know, what is basically Unity? What is the advantages of Unity compared to Unreal Engine, for instance? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I mean, the game market, right, is is essentially, for all intents and purposes, split between Unreal Engine and, and Unity. Um, and Unity is really great because it gives you, you know, the, the physics engine built in. Um, so you can do things like realistic physics with like drivable vehicles, which you can take a look at if we have time. Um, but it gives you that cross-platform support. So. Uh, it's what effectively enables Spatial as a platform to run across, you know, mobile, web, and VR. Um, and it does have a little bit of a learning curve, but they have a great community. If you haven't used Unity before, definitely check out learn.unity.com um, to learn Unity specifically. Um, they have great, uh, massive set of tutorials to learn everything you need to do, and it's got that really great flexibility. So you can do essentially everything you want to do in terms of building a game through drag and drop. Uh, and then Unity as a platform allows you to get next level. Uh, within Spatial, we support visual scripting, which is basically coding you know, through drag and drop. Um, so there's a lot that, that you can do uh, within here. Uh, here I've got uh, the sample project um, for Spatial, the Creator Toolkit sample project open uh, within Unity. And we actually provide a lot of different samples uh, within the project itself, uh, and then also within uh, our documentation. So if you go to docs.spatial.io, I think the, the link was yeah, put in the chat there. Yeah, I see that now. Um, you know, we provide uh, tons of tutorials, both text and video. Um, so you can check out the videos within the docs and on our YouTube channel um, for how to create everything. So within Spatial, at a very high level, you can create everything from entire spaces or worlds and space templates, basically reusable spaces, um, to custom avatars and custom animations. So like I said, if you have your 3D um, avatar character, you can upload that. If it's a rigged avatar model, you can bring that into Unity and into Spatial. Uh, just recently, we launched drivable vehicles. So you can actually get in a car and drive around 
uh, your worlds, which is crazy exciting. People are even applying this to flyable vehicles too. So there are ways to get flying vehicles into spatial. Uh, we have a whole quest building system. So we'll see, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, that's effectively, you know, when you want to give your visitors to your space tasks and things to accomplish, and then you can reward them with badges and soon other items as well for you know accomplishing certain things or getting you know collecting a certain number of points or what have you basically you can define the logic of how um, nice. the interactivity in the space goes and the last bit is uh, interactivity uh, and visual scripting so through visual scripting you can have add a whole different layer of interactivity from like power-ups to giving your avatar and people in the space like superpowers um, it really kind of blows the doors off in terms of you know what you're able to do. So we provide all that uh, in here, as well as a whole set of samples and examples that you can pull right into your own project uh, as well. Everything from like a drivable golf cart that's all rigged up and ready to go to a full on game. So we, our team built this game Hyperjump, which is kind of like a 3D Pac-Man um, nice. but with, with a twist. So you can actually download this um, Unity package and bring it directly into your own project and remix it, use components of it. It's a great showcase for how visual scripting and like a gamified space come together uh, and how it works uh, within Spatial. So definitely check out these samples, check out the Unity tutorials. There's so much um, and this is expanding like every single day. It's so great that you provide the samples as well because it allows people who either don't have coding knowledge or people who don't have the, the 3D knowledge to just get started, you know, and I think that's that's really powerful. Uh, how is that uh, database um, done? Did you just uh, put it internally from your team or was it community made? So it's both. So we just we just launched it recently. So the assets here are from our team. We are going to start. Um, we have a section here that we haven't populated it yet, but soon we're going to be start populating examples and samples from our community. Our community is actively cool. building. Um, so soon we have a section down here. We'll start to add content in from the community. So if you for all the builders out there that are building things, if there are things, you know, samples, either visual script graphs or assets that you're happy to provide for the community to remix and use, you know, reach out to myself or, or Tyrone or through Spatial on Twitter, uh, and we'd be happy to include those uh, in our samples library. Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, so anyone who's listening to this, if you want to get started and uh, get into the the, the that's um, the important thing right saying we're early right now this is very early so getting involved and reaching out to us you know yep. if you're a builder or creator is going to have its most benefit down the line because you're going to get to be there as new things are added and we get to work closely with a lot of the builders and creators mm -hmm. yeah, and you know to to these things there are two approaches it's either you want to own your assets and sell them and the second approach is to build in public and build in openly i think both have their advantages and disadvantages but i think you know especially when you're in early stage in those platforms i mean those assets they might be used thousands of times you know yep. uh so it's i think uh it, it's very cool to be able to contribute to to a growing ecosystem in that way uh and i think it's also great for your portfolio if you have something that people really love and use everywhere yeah. definitely definitely and we're going to be so we'll have our samples library you know here that we're populating um the other note that we will add is coming uh in may and june we will be opening up ways for creators to be able to actively monetize on their spaces and their assets so there is a marketplace that's coming soon to spatial so stay tuned for more information on that that's um, to drop. It's gonna nice be, it's going to be great it's going to be very creator friendly uh ref share wise so we have a lot more coming uh, in the coming weeks Cool. That's awesome. And look at this. Life Rock is saying, I learned the methods of spatial SDK from the instructional videos on YouTube. It's all there. Shout out to Jake and all involved. Very doable and passable to learn. So nice. Awesome. Your work is appreciated. And if you want to check out the playlist, we put it out, a uh, creative toolkit playlist, but I'm sure there are other playlists with, with um, more so dev focus, etc. So uh, you can find everything on their YouTube channel. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, great. So would you mind showing more into the platform you were opening up uh, this file? Um, yeah. Would you mind showing yeah. more as to how, how that actually looks like? Yeah, so I'll, I'm going to kind of start sort of backwards. I'll show you what a finished space looks like. Sure. Um, and then we can jump into Unity. So, you know, just as a, a great example, this is the Hugo Boss immersive showroom space. Um, so mm -hmm. you can see this is all just running in Chrome in my browser. Nothing to, to download or install. You know, one click and you're in. Um, you can see there's a bunch of people showing up here 
and I'm here in my custom avatar. So this is actually one of the samples that we provide to you, our team designed. Uh, this is the, the spation, as we call them, um, that you can use in your project. We've seen even people take this and remix it too, which is really cool. Um, so this is a custom avatar. I've got some others here too. If I go down to the bottom right and choose edit avatar, I can be a banana. I can be, I upload a model of a Gundam as well that I got off of Sketchfab. And nice. you know, I can be that as well. So you can really, and you can see each of these is different stylistically. Um, so I can be a Gundam in, in the Hugo Boss space. Nice. Um, but this is a great, you know, great example of space because I mean, A, it's it's absolutely gorgeous um, mm -hmm. from you know, lighting and, and design perspective. Shout out to our friends at Polycount uh, who designed and, and built this space in collaboration with Hugo Boss. Mm -hmm. But it also contains a number of elements from the creator toolkit as well. Um, so for example, down in the bottom right, you can see our quest system. So when you come into a space, you can see what you have to do. Uh, and if there are subtasks to that, I can see, you know, how many of those things I need to do. So in this case, I have to find the orbs. I've already read the sign. So we have this point of interest marker. Uh, and then I have to start collecting these orbs. So as I do that, there are sounds as well. I just muted it for now. Um, I can go and collect these orbs and I get these custom design pop-ups in the space that align with, with the Hugo Boss brand. So I go, I'm going through and collecting all these orbs and I can even come up and interact with these outfits. So if I click nice. that, I can learn more about that outfit and then even link out uh, to the Hugo Boss website. So I can click on that nice. and it'll take me out to Hugo Boss to purchase uh, the outfit, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I can go through this whole space, and once I finish collecting all the orbs, then I can actually get uh, a reward. Uh, some people reward visitors with a badge that you can show off on your profile. Others reward with, with other items. In this case, you get the last uh, orb here so you can see it. Awesome. Oh, and you unlock a digital avatar. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. So yep. I come here, come to the stage. I've completed, you know, the exploration. I completed the quests, and now this giant Hugo Boss outfit has appeared. So I can come up to it and claim my prize. Nice. And click redeem. In this case, I've already done this a couple of times, so I've redeemed it already. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lots this of is suits. gonna, yeah, this is gonna take me to Ready Player Me in this case to redeem it. Okay. Uh, so I've already redeemed. And it, then so you I redeem it as an NFT in Ready Player Me, correct? Yeah, yeah. This this particular one isn't an NFT. It's a collectible. They Hugo Boss okay. chose not to use it as an NFT, but okay, okay, got and it. You can have it. That link can take you out anywhere to claim right. an NFT. For example. Okay, yep, so awesome. it is very flexible. Um, so now I've got my Hugo Boss outfit. I can strut my stuff. You know, yeah, this space I, really anywhere that Ready Player Me is accessible. Yeah, within that token gating that he just said, you also can, uh, you know, have access to the space based on that and then can participate in things. So the same way you mm. clicked on that link, someone can come to your space, not be able to get into it, but then go and purchase essentially the key to get in. Makes sense. And then basically the next step would be Yoga Bust does a new kind of event happening. All the people who have the suits can come Correct. in. Correct. And yes. then you need to wear the suit to actually, you know, interact and stuff. That's right. To get point. the early, okay. like early party, right? You can mm -hmm. go to the VIP party because you have the suit. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Another example here I'll show uh, is this spatial circuit or this racing circuit. So like I said, we recently introduced uh, drivable vehicles in spatial as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get in cars and drive them around. So in this case, I can come up here and we, this is something people love to do. It's have this avatar switcher set up so I can walk up to this guy in a suit and put on the racing suit. Nice. And then I can get in. Let's get in. We've got a few different vehicles here. These awesome race cars. We've got a Tesla Roadster. And then my favorite is the Warthog from Halo. Can you drive them? Oh, you can drive them. Oh, well, wow. hell yeah, you can yeah. drive it. Let's, Let's, go. Go. Let's go. go. So we can drive this guy around the track. It's muted, but like I said, there's Oh, I want to do a race. I, I don't want to do a race now. Yeah hop, yeah, hop in. People can, if we, I can share this link in the in the chat. You know, people can hop in right now. And uh, I'll share it <laughs> in our live race. Chat. Let's go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, people can hop in, you know, grab. Grab, uh, I think I have the Warhog now, but there's a Tesla Roadster. There's a couple of the other cars there too. We can do a little lap around the track. But yeah, this is all built, um, all built in spatial. No, you know, no code, just all using provided components. Whoa, get a little crazy in here. My God, there's no avatar with crazy hair. I can't, <laughs> I can't define myself in 
I need to I need to find I don't know whatever. Right. Yeah. So okay, let's yeah, go. So with this is all. The anything is anything cards. is is possible <laughs> now in spatial. And this all. Nice. There we go. Let's go. No. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I run you over. I know, right? The warthog just knocked me off the road. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's awesome. So this is Whoops. all <laughs> got a little little derby going here. Um, but yeah, this is, this is like I said, it's all being built um, in nice. spatial. So for example, you know, we have this is one of our templated spaces. This um, uh, or example spaces. This uh, is great because it shows you everything that's possible to do. You know, in terms of the the interactivity, um, collectibles, things like that. So, for example, let's take a look at um, one of these coin collectibles and what that looks like. So, if we go into the inspector here, this is just a coin that has sound on it. It's got a sphere collider. If you know Unity, has a basic sphere collider on it. So, when the avatar walks into this coin, we have set up this trigger event. So, this is one of the spatial components that we provide. It's basically kind of a, a wrapped Unity event object um, that we can sync with with spatial systems. Um, so on here we have this on enter event. So basically, when someone walks into the coin, we're going to play a sound. We're going to hide the coin. We're going to set active to null um, or to you know to to turn it off. Uh, we're going to play a sound. Or we're going to play a particle system, excuse me, um, and then we're going to hide that trigger as well. And then we've tied that to our quest system. So we have a whole quest events capability that we've set up so we can tie this to that event system. So basically when we collect this coin, we have a task progress, just like you saw the collectibles in the Hugo boss space. We have that here as well. That, and that task is collecting all the coins. So we're basically adding task progress. So we're, yes. you know, there was, there's four coins and uh, we're increasing that by one. Um, so we and can this is, for instance, something the sandbox is really good at. Um, I'm, I'm sure you, you, you saw it yeah. uh, before. Right, they have their, all the, those task um, uh, tracking things. I think that's really cool that you implement this in spatial. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is whole this whole quest system here. I can open this up uh, here, and we can see the quest. In this case, is you know reach the end. That's you know, one overall task or quest, and we can set up our individual tasks within that. So in this case, the task we were looking at was collect all the spatial coins, and that's a progress bar. There's four steps to do that uh, in here. Uh, we, uh, you saw that golf cart. That's actually a sample that we provide uh, as well. So I'm gonna just find it in here and just drop it right into the scene. In this case, it's already all set up, so it's got all the variables, all the colliders, everything you need, all set up. So you can really easily, essentially, copy the variables and components of this into your own vehicle. So we want to make it really easy to bring your own vehicles into the, into, into the scene. Uh, and then for those who already know Unity, there's a lot here that's basically out of the box, um, out of the box Unity. So for example, you know, we have our, uh, we use uh, wheel colliders and wheel meshes uh, from, if I go into the wheels here, there we go. So we're just using Unity's wheel collider system mm -hmm. um, and rigid body system uh, in Unity to do that. So the, the real benefit here is why we're going this way is you know, we don't want to have creators have to learn a new studio tool to build yep. And have some some other downloader you know there's already millions of people that are building a unity today so now you can take those assets and really you add a couple of components that are spatial specific just so we can read those properties but otherwise all the yeah, other yeah that's assets, the thing that's difficult on your end right you need to read those properties you need to make sure they work well in your engine etc and that's where you i suppose you need to you do the work in the back end yeah. exactly yeah so we have like this synced object component and that's mm -hmm. just basically so that on our back end um, we can, as you, as that, in this case, this vehicle moves throughout the scene, we can just sync that with the other players in that scene, which is kind of critical, but otherwise everything else, rigid body, the meshes, all of that stuff, the sound files, all that is out of the box, um, unity support. Um, now what's really great is you know, the last thing is, is here, you know, I have the scene it's already built up. It's already got the quest system built in. Uh, I can just click test active scene right here and click continue. I'm just going to make sure this is the active scene yet feature demo, save and just click test. And that's going to package everything up 
Very uh, cool. This is the first time I'm testing this out, so this might take a minute or two. <laughs> right. uh, it's going to compress. Oh everything. my god! Spatial life break. It's that uh, golf cart. Took, this is why you never do live demos, but hopefully yeah. I've done it before. We should be fine. Shouldn't have put that golf cart there. <laughs> yeah, that's going to totally screw things up. No, it won't. Um, so this is going to package everything up, and it'll essentially is uh, building a web version of the scene off the bat, so we can test it really quickly right in a web browser. Nice. And then once we've tested it, you'll see here in a second. Um, it gives you, you know, all the spatial features that you get. So you can test to make sure the avatar works as expected, your animations work, any of the interactivity works. Uh, and then once that's done, we can come back into spatial and there's a publish button. We can click publish and then it'll publish that package and build it for all the different platforms for VR, for mobile, for web. Uh, so your space works seamlessly across all those and any other platforms we might add uh, in the future. So, how so how do what, you so whether you oh, sorry, spend, uh, whether you spent a day or a year what we what he just covered there is that whole concept of zero infrastructure gaming right from this point he's clicking it you're now you have a game mm -hmm. right you can immediately invite people to come in on any of those platforms and participate without having to worry about anything else yeah it's exactly awesome. exactly that's so cool. I, I was I was wondering. Um, you are, you are showing all these things, and I'm sure um, you will have a lot of studios, game devs that want to try this out and experiment. How do teams work in your engine? Do they have a way to to work together? It uh, didn't work. <laughs> how, how of course you... it didn't, because we're doing a live demo. Live demo is always uh, good. It's fine. It's the golf it's cart. Fine. Delete it, man. <laughs> yeah. It's possible that was screwing it up, but. Uh... Sorry, yeah, you, what was the question? Sorry, sorry. I'm curious about how how teams can work together. Um, do they have like is there from syncing for projects or but things like this, or is this still, still in the works? Yeah, so I mean, we typically recommend you know, using um, you know Git or other tools you know as you yeah. need project to, to sync those things. We are working on additional tools to make it easier um, to sync assets. Um, so we're going to be building out some some tools that, that exist outside of uh, of Unity. To allow you to uh, like sync assets especially things you're like you're selling you're gonna be selling on our marketplace and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, so there'll be other tools coming um but yeah it looks like it was something with the golf cart <laughs> 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 uh, we deleted that and now we're we're good to go here in in my web browser so you can see i've got my quest that was set up and then if i head over to those coins i can come in here we have little teleporters so you can teleport around the scene that's very cool. It's so smooth. It looks great. And then that task is updating. Boom. I've collected all the coins. Nice. Oh, that works really great. There's sound as well. But Ooh. We're muted here. Yeah, you can embed animations and reactions. Nice. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it can react as I move up, you know, up to things as animations play. Um, I can even in integrate, you know, um, uh, nice. uh, galleries into the space too. So we have a gallery object. So you can take. In this case, but like, they have to be in your in your database. Right. They can't be. Yeah, so you can you can connect your MetaMask, your Phantom Wallets, for okay. e Polygon and Solana, and I can bring in my NFTs to display nice. them uh, in the space as well, which is awesome. Even bring up a little info plaque that links out to that NFT. And will so other players see this? this live? Okay. Nice. Say it again. Will other players see this live when they when if you change? Yeah, yeah. So in this case, I'm in my sandbox because um, I'm testing. This is exactly. private only to me. I can't share access to this because it's Got just it. be a testing space. But yeah, once I bring this into a public space, I can still make changes live. Um, when it you comes can to make changes live. Okay. Yeah. So when it comes to like bringing in art and moving it around, those I can make changes live and people will see that. You can even assign other hosts of the space. So if you want to collaborate, say on a gallery or, or other type of space, um, you can co-collaborate live right in web, mobile, or VR to, to lay things out. Um, right. And everyone so cool. will see that uh, live. Yeah, yeah I mean, cool. when you think about it, you can have, like, guest artists decorate your game space, right? Like, if you're creating something like a, say, like a Resident Evil kind of thing, right? And you're in some old house, you mm -hmm. can have somebody create the paintings that are on the wall. You can reach out to artists. and There's always collaborative opportunities there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Exactly. I just saw your emotes. What about emotes? Are they also being able to be in included in game or is it like just for your engine and, and Ready Player Me? Yeah, so yeah, definitely can be integrated. So we have this whole emotes reactions system for everyone that's built in. 
Um, so we have all these different emotes. These are my, my uh, saved presets. But if I click here on all reactions, I can see all these different dance moves. I can even upload my own. Um, nice. So I can upload them for myself, but I can also uh, supply these to other people. So either, you know, someone can click on something to trigger that dance move, or maybe they walk onto a specific area or do, you know, have some sort of trigger and you can have that animation play. So there's all different ways to integrate that. And you'll be able to sell those different dance moves as well in the future. So how do creator get... be, how do, how do creator be able to work on this? What do you get the rig and the avatar or how, how would it work? Yeah. So, um, you can, if you have just a rigged uh, animated humanoid, um, mm -hmm. rig setup, bring that into uh, unity. I think I have one here. I mean, yeah, here, avatar animation. So this is just, well, it's not going to show the preview here, but this is just a rigged humanoid avatar animation with no mesh applied to it. Nice. Um, you can just bring this, yeah, it's not going to show up in the scene here, but, um, but yeah, as long as it's a rigged, uh, a rigged animation, you can see here, I have the avatar set up in this controller. Um, then that'll work. Here we go. Okay. There we go. This is a nice, very cool. <laughs> right. So we can just upload that directly to spatial. So if I go on this prefab, you can see we have this avatar animation component. And when you upload that to spatial, that becomes a reusable animation that you can either, you know, trigger in your scene or you can, you know, transmit to other people or use for yourself within our emotes menu. So all different kinds of ways to do this. So whether you're getting something from Mixamo, great resource for animations, or you've got your own that you've created, you can bring that and use that in spatial too. Makes sense. That's so awesome. I'm, I'm so excited. There's so many things you can do. Uh, I think that's uh, that's really cool. Uh, last last few questions. I know we're getting uh, close to the to the to the NFT hour. I don't want to keep you for too long, but um, obviously, I think uh, before we go into the questions of the of the of Erica and Maxi, I saw your questions. Um, so you mentioned the uploading process. You mentioned everything here. It's very easy. You can just build on your custom space. Now, I was I was wondering. Um, what are the limitations here? Because we're working with Unity, so obviously you can't do with a, a massive space without having optimization issues. So how does that work? What's the limits? Um, is there size limits, polycomp limits, whatever, things like that? Yeah, totally. Yeah, because you are building for all these different platforms, we definitely have recommended you know, recommended limits from, you know, vertices to texture memory and things like that. Um, all of that is actually provided here in the scene vitals window in the scene. So when nice. you're building in Unity. Got life checking. Nice. That's yeah, we provide you in real time <laughs> with, like, and these are recommended limits. You can definitely, you can go beyond these and still publish. Um, you just potentially run the risk of hitting some performance, you know, hiccups in, on different devices. But if you stay within these limits, you know, we can guarantee performance um, wherever spatial is supported. Um, from a size limit perspective, because everything is being rendered locally, we do have limits there. We're not streaming assets um, to, uh, to, the, uh, to the end user. So when you're testing in your sandbox, you can upload a Unity scene and assets that are up to one gigabyte um, just for testing purposes. And then when you publish, um, it's 500 megabytes of a whole Unity scene and packages that you can upload. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah, great. That's that's a lot of data. Over. You can do you can do a lot of stuff there. What would you be can do a ton, yeah. just so people can visualize? What would it mean to use the entire one gigabyte space? Oh man, I mean, you can apply that really in every in any way you can. What tends to take off the most amount of space is the texture memory. So if you mm -hmm. have like four K materials or textures, definitely uh, in your scene, that'll take up you know the most. Um, it's also the easiest way to optimize your scene is by reducing those. So we do tend to recommend around 2048 by 2048, I think maximum textures. Um, but you can be selective in where you use those. Obviously, you don't want to use those in like background elements and like the background mountains or something that someone's not going to get up close to. Um, you can allocate those you know, closer in. You can also choose um, when you're creating uh, a, a custom avatar or custom vehicle or, or inter you can upload an interactive object um you know when you're we have different limitations if that object if that avatar is going to be 
either global or ecosystem. So global meaning it can be taken into any one space across the entire platform. We're going to have lower limits there because we don't know what obviously um, how heavy that other creators scene is going to be right. versus if you create that avatar or that vehicle or that object as you know an ecosystem so it exists just within your space or your ecosystem of spaces there's going to be higher limits there simply because we want to give you the flexibility to say you know maybe my environment has you know lower textures or lower poly count but yeah. i want i really want the it avatar to be super to nice in that yeah, space right. to be like really really yeah. realistic. so to right. give you that flexibility while still ensuring performance for anyone that visits your space on whatever device they use which is why you usually end up with like these cartoon like environments exactly. right so that way you can have flowing fur on the bear running around yeah, otherwise you wouldn't be able to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, hair is such a, a big topic. I don't. That's a whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's, man. right. Uh, I had to work on some hair at one point. It was it was a mess. Anyways, um, okay, let's get into the community's question. If you have any question, this is your moment. We'll we'll try to answer them. I see two questions currently. First from Erica Gloom, who's getting into the spicy stuff. Are are the spaces only? For uh, I think she was asking minus eighteen content plus eighteen they, plus. Uh, plus eighteen. Sorry, do they are they LT eighteen plus? Or do they need to be family friendly? Um, so we do. Uh, our terms of use uh, is our community is uh, eighteen plus. So we do have our community guidelines. If you go to spatial.io slash guidelines, um, you can see what um, you know what's appropriate for for the community. Um, so. Um, that, that's typically the age uh, age of folks that we have on the platform. Spatial tends to be, um, you know, an older user base and the more 20s and 30s versus like, you know, teens and, and that age because um, we are you know, an 18 up uh, community. But that may change slightly uh, in the near future. Would there be a way to um, gate some experiences, let's say, if there's explicit content or something like this? Um, so if it still stays within our community guidelines, we have some, you know, fairly, you know, fairly strict community guidelines to make sure it's a safe, safe platform for everybody. Um, we uh, have, you can add tags to your spaces, um, both as, as a mechanism for discovery. Um, so you can, you know, if it's, you know, 18 plus, or if there's a certain topic or something like that, you can add that tag to your space. Okay, great. Um, Max is asking, what is the app called on iOS? Uh, spatial. If you just search for spatial, S P A T I A L. Uh, let's see if we can get. If you go to um, spatial.io/download, you can find the link to all the app stores that Spatial's on. Nice stuff. That's so cool. That's that's uh, that it is on iOS. And shout out to Mariana. I saw you. Happy to see you there. Um, okay. If you have any other questions, this is your moment. Otherwise, we'll start to. Uh, stop the screen. I see a question by Mariana. She's asking if someone wanted to design wearables for spatial, what advice do you have them to start? Yeah, and there's a lot of different tools. I mean, I think you can use um, often like tools that you're comfortable with in terms of creating outfits. Um, in terms of specs, you know, we both support Ready Player Me and, you know, our own custom avatars. Um, when it comes to the custom avatars, we tend to recommend Ready Player Me's, you know, specifications and limitations. Um, so you can take a look at their documentation for, for what they recommend as well. Um, but I'm not super familiar with, um, with say like fashion platforms in terms of creating fashion. I know there's a number of them out there like Clo and, and, and some others. Um, so you can definitely take a look at those. Um, and I think a great starting point is, you know, a tool that I use all the time is Mixamo because they have a lot, not just animations, but they have a huge library of, of avatar designs that you can use and even remix. And then I also like to use Sketchfab as well. And there's um, a whole section for characters and rigged characters that you can download and use and remix um, as well. So definitely take a look at those resources. Yeah, and I see uh, Riz has a question about the plans to expand with Sandstorm. Um, you know, that's really good because a lot of what we discussed here today has two different solutions. The ones you can achieve yourself and the ones you're going to need help with. And what our relationship with Sandstorm is to fill that gap, right? Our goal is to have, we have such a large community of builders and a large community of participants and having a way to easily decide, I'm in the space building it, I need this element, I want this element. Where can I go to find somebody? You know, and I think that's where you'll see the expansion of the relationship with Sandstorm grow 
is that more people will be collaborating with each other, which just equals more amazing things in spatial. So that's the growth. Now, with this being the introductory masterclass, there are going to be others, right? And we want to bring members of our community into you know, this space and in this environment here so you can learn from them how to do those things. Is it really that hard to, to just go from, I have this 3D model to now I want it to be my avatar, right? What does that process look like? Or if I want to build a quest, we have really strong quest builders out there. They're going to be able to offer those types of lessons. So you can see, and that'll take some of the guessing out of it and learn from them. Definitely want this to be an ongoing education process. I think that's uh, that's a super nice approach, and uh, especially it will be community driven. So that's awesome as well. You will be able to connect with people who start and who are basically also beginners in Unity, in Spatial, and you will be able to see what their struggles are, uh, how they how they navigate uh, this tool uh, as non experts, and um, but still expert enough that they know how it works and, and what to do with it. So uh, <laughs> that's the great thing uh, that you will be able to Again, learn Again, we're so early. Like, you know, doing this now makes you the subject matter expert in record time because you just got to get out there and start building. Yeah, and if, and if as you're building, as the, the community out there is building, um, they're using the toolkit or Unity, things like that, and there's any feedback, like, hey, things that you look for as a feature or maybe things that could be better, definitely let us know. Like, you'll go on our Discord, spatial.io slash Discord, um, you'll see, like, we're thrive on feedback all the time. We listen to the to the community and want to bring that feedback back into the platform as quickly as possible. So we're all ears because um, yes. we're building this platform for for you all, the creators and builders. Yep. And to be more concrete, I think uh, we'll have something ready in the next few weeks that you will be excited about. So uh, I don't want to Alpha. announce it just yet, but um, <laughs> there will be a first activation between Sandstorm and Special, which will be very cool. I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. Uh, any other questions right there? Um, Mariana, thanking you guys because she had a designer asking this. So it's awesome. Life Rocka wearables are amazing. The things I get to see on a daily basis, uh, what people are bringing in and doing, it's it's exciting. Definitely. Definitely. I think that's Brian Life, too, if I'm not mistaken. So what's Is it up, Brian? I think so. The PSP hey, looks like Brian. So good to see you here, man. Yes, we amazing, also amazing our... creator. He's built. He just launched his his avatar collection recently. Yep. Um, so nice. definitely check him awesome. out because he's an awesome, uh, awesome creator, awesome artist, uh, and he's built some really uh, amazing avatars that are running. He this really has. Like he's pushing the boundaries for sure. Definitely. Very cool. So, any any last questions, or else we'll just call it a day for today. Um, mm -mm -mm. I'm just scrolling up, seeing if I didn't miss anything. I think we should be good for now. Well, if you think of stuff um, later, you know where to find us. Um, you find yeah. you know, myself on Twitter, uh, J.A. Steinerman, uh, Tyrone, your fine spray uh, paint art. Yeah, um, yeah, or just windswept 1111. Yep. And uh, Spatial, you know, you can reach out to us on Spatial. We're Spatial underscore IO uh, on Twitter, on Instagram, um, and, and YouTube definitely. as well. So definitely feel free to reach out. And for anyone who missed a portion of this session or who wants to watch the replay because there was a lot of information in here, uh, this was recorded and this will be playing multiple times, um, whether on this Twitch uh, channel or you will be um, you will have access to this video in our Discord and I'm sure um, Tyrone and Jake will share that as well. So very awesome. I think we can wrap this up for the day. Thank you so much, Tyrone and Jake, for your time. I know we went a little bit overboard, but I think it was a super nice session. We talked about a lot of topics. Um, if you want to check out Spatial, you can just go on spatial.io. You will find a lot of very interesting information there. Uh, we shared the creator tools kits before, and here you have all the docs uh, for creators that you can check out uh, if stay with want to share the link in there you will find everything you found all the templates that jake has been talking about you will find all the accesses to all the tutorials that they made and they're really amazing so thank you very much for your time this was uh one of our metaverse series with spatial and look forward to the next one bye bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. thanks everybody see you